Hello, this is H.C. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest IV! I've rearranged my party for the upcoming events. Uh, we got Solo, Ragnar, Elena, Boria. Got the Zenithian armor on Solo there to help protect against magic. Same thing with the liquid metal armor on Ragnar there. And Elena's the same. Boria I've got on the flowing dress, the liquid metal shield, meteorite bracer. We're all healed up. We're set and ready to go! So let's take down that last barrier. This one's a little bit more like an actual tower. But let's head on over here first to grab some treasure! The zombie mail, which you could probably sell. It's probably not worth much. It's cursed. So, yeah, you don't want that. And there's there's no upside to it, at least not to my knowledge. So, yeah, I don't like that one. As far as cursed armor goes, I like Hela's armor better. How's it going? What's a priest doing up here? Huh. Nuts. Doesn't he already have that? Well, isn't that good? Nuts. What the? It's boss time! But yeah, in the NES version of the game... Well, hold on first time. Uh, we want to get Snub on Boria to protect against Amon's magic. And Snooze on the Drooling Ghouls to crowd control them. But yeah, in the NES version of the game, this is the first time you've ever heard of or seen Amon. So when that reveal happens there, it's like a huge surprise. There's like no foreshadowing or anything. I mean, you never had plot twists like that back in the day. But, well, here you have it. So yeah, he was behind the whole thing this entire time. But anyway, what we want to do now is uh, get Snub on everyone to help protect against more magic. And we also want Borya to cast Oomph on Solo and Ragnar before we get Snub going on them. So, but basically, you get Snub on everyone, you're pretty much immune to most of what Amon can do. So, and let's get one more Oomph. Now, the, the reason, there is a very good reason why I do not want to use Oomph on Elena. The reason is because with the Falcon Knife earrings, well, there's two problems. First, Oomph only doubles the damage of the first hit, not the second hit. And the other reason is because uh, Elena has a very high innate... Oh, that bounced. I forgot about that. But yeah, Elena has a very high innate crit rate, and Oomph prevents you from getting critical hits. So... You want Elena to be able to get in her critical hits there. Let's use the Zenithian sword as an item there. See what that does. And let's crowd control the drilling tools again since they woke up apparently. A two out of three, not bad. But yeah, you use the Zenithian sword as an item. It uses that disrupting wave or whatever that's called. And it can remove bounce from Amon, but apparently he just reestablished that. So let's try that one again. If he's wasting a turn doing that, I'm happy with it. So, and Boria should just defend for now. All right, got him. So now all we gotta do is take out the other three guys. And don't lick Elena, that's my job. Hmm, you know, maybe it might be a better idea to use Boom on these guys. Yeah, let's get some sort of spell on them because they got really high physical evade, so that could be a problem there. And, yeah, we'll go with Crackle. I thought about using Snooze on them again, but eh, one more spell ought to do. Ha! There we go. Got him. But I pretty much learned all the spells that I care about, although it might have been nice if I learned Kazap for Solo there. Ha ha! Not anymore. And we'll never see him again. No, I mean, that, that's the last time we see him in uh, the game here, so. Okay, well, there we go. So let's uh, head on back, heal up, and get ready to go. Well, now the barrier's gone, so. We want to bring in Kirill because, for the enemies here, because there's quite a few enemies who are susceptible to whack. We also got the liquid metal sword on Kirill there. So, but uh, he, he should be fine. But yeah, I mean, enemies... Let's see, in the castle Nadiria, as we call it, 
Yeah, I'm mean, susceptible to whack, fizzle, uh, snooze. So yeah, debuffs are going to be very useful coming up here. Well, let's see how that barrier is doing then. All right, it's gone. So yeah, apparently Sarl had a much better barrier around his castle than Xdeath did. And you see those statues up there? We're just going to walk around them here. Don't step on the barriers there, or that will kill you. Okay, we got new enemies here. Tiki Mask. Oh, they're pretty much immune to most everything I can do. And let's see, the Prince of Darkness is also immune to most everything I can do. But uh, they're not immune, but they have really high resistance to debuffs. That's, that didn't work. Nuts! Couldn't get even one to hit on them. Uh-oh. Ow! Yeah, that's why I wanted to get Fizzle on them, but I uh, can't do much, so... Might as well try attacking and... Let's get Oomph going, I guess. Ow! Well, at least I got Oomph in before they fizzled me. Hey, hey, alright! Got two of them at least. They got, uh, about 200 HP, so it'll, it'll take a little while to kill these guys. There we go. I always thought there was only one Prince of Darkness in Hell, but apparently I was wrong. I don't want to heal up yet, because we don't have access to our reserves. So what I want to do, step outside here. Now we do have access to our reserves, just like the Stairway to Zenithia. Uh, you can't run into enemies while you're outside. You can use the happy hat to restore your MP if you really wanted to. Just walk around for a little while, but eh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, unfortunately, with the Castle in the Deria, no unique final dungeon music. Kind of disappointing, considering how amazing the rest of the soundtrack is. It's still my favorite overall soundtrack in the series, but eh, I just wish I had unique music. And it's not a very long dungeon either, which is, I guess, good and bad. I mean, I suppose the passage to Nadiria is sort of like the real final dungeon, whereas this, there's really not much to it. So. But even then, they didn't have unique final dungeon music. Oh, well. Now, we could take that elevator downstairs, but let's not do that yet. Let's go, to, let's go up here first. If you take the elevator down, that'll pretty much take you to the end of the area. I suppose it is kind of nice that they don't make the final dungeon lo very long, because back in the day, when I was your age, we had to go through like an hour-long dungeon. No save points or anything. If you died to the final boss, you got to spend another hour to going through that dungeon just for the chance to fight him again and go through a secret passage. And we liked it! But yeah, here, now, takes me five, probably 10, 15 minutes to get through the dungeon. So, if you die, you don't have to go very far. Would have been nice if they put a save point right next to the final boss, but, well, they still didn't do that back then. At least when this was on the NES, but... Here we get the Sage's Stone, probably the most important item in the game. What it does is just like the previous Dragon Quest games, you use it and it'll cast multi-heal or heal us on everyone. Multi-pass? No. No, multi-heal. So it, it's a way for you to heal everyone all at once in the event that you haven't been using uh, cure all that much. Is there something behind that statue? No. no. Okay, I'm just being paranoid. But anyway, so now let's take the elevator back downstairs. So yeah, we couldn't get past that pit before, but now we can. I wonder if this castle used to belong to, like, or er, Zenithia. Because they seem to have the same architecture here as they did at the Baron's Folly and everything. But anyway, there's nothing in that elevator shaft yet either. Kind of reminds me of... The first Mission Impossible movie. But anyway, we can't go through to the back of the of the elevator. 
so we gotta take this down here. It's a little tricky puzzle, but nothing we can't handle. Now, remember back at Baron's Folly how you could get on top of the elevator? Well, now we can. So let's walk around here. Just be careful not to fall down into the middle. And we're... That's pretty much most of the castle there. So, not a very long trek, but... Well, you take what you can get. Game? I was almost through to the end. Well, anyway, we got Dragooners here. They're susceptible to sap. And that's pretty much all I care about. And, of course, we can use Whack on the Emperor Wyvern there. So let's use that. I'm going to use Cussam, since there's two of them this time around. Ow! Yeah, these guys can sometimes attack twice per round. And another attack for good measure. Uh, they're pretty much susceptible to any element except Crack. So that's why I'm not having Borya join in on the fun. Oh, well. Hopefully this won't put too many of us to sleep. Well, I guess I can use that Cockadoodle-Doo spell. Good thing I had that Zenithian helm. Holy cow. I think that protects against Snooze, didn't it? And let's heal up a little bit there. I think, in, if I recall correctly, in future Dragon Quest DS games, the Sage's Stone will actually heal your reserve characters as well. Not just those in your front four, so that's pretty nice. Okay, that's it. I think we've made it to the end here. Now, remember what they were telling us to do something before the final battle? We don't have access to our reserves. Whatever shall we do? Well, if you go into your bag here... Where is it? There we go. We got the Baron's Bugle that we picked up before. And if you use it, well, you can't see it, but the uh, the wagon is there. So now we have it, and we're all ready and set and ready to go. We're on, what is this place called? Sorrow's Peak, and there he is. He looks just like S. Stark. I guess he really did use the Secret of Evolution. I wonder how much more powerful he's gotten with the Amulet of Transmutation in the Secret of Evolution. How many forms can he possibly have? Can we defeat him and save the world? Find out next time on the finale of Let's Play Dragon Quest IV. This is H.C. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day.